In this video, I'm going to reveal one of the biggest secrets that will change your perspective about life in general. Why is it a secret? Well, because it's not taught in schools or any public institution. By intention, not by mistake. They are very much aware that if you only knew this secret that I'm about to share with you, you can become so powerful and independent. Please do not skip any part of this video. Watch it with an open mind. Make note if you can. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and set the notification button because I'm going to make a part 2 of this video very soon and you don't want to miss it. Alright, let's get it. Did you know that your brain has approximately 86 billion neurons? In fact, even more than that, they are all connected in a massive network system that makes you and me who we are as individuals. So whatever we do or experience creates what is called synapses or synapses, which is basically a neural connection. These neural connections also create different emotions. Now, depending on which neuron get fired more often, this connection can become much stronger and more efficient. We know this by studying neuroplasticity. What is neuroplasticity? Let's look it up. Neuroplasticity, also known as neuroplasticity or brain plasticity, is the ability of neural networks in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. It is when the brain is rewired to function in some way that differs from how it previously functioned. For example, if you decide to learn a new skills today, by being consistent, your brain will create strong neural connections that will link the two hemispheres of your brain to make you become good at that particular skill that you choose to learn. This is what we mean when we say nothing is impossible because literally you can do or become whatever you wish if you only knew how to utilize your brain. Whatever you do on a daily basis, you are physically modifying your brain to become good at it. Now, this can be dangerous because your brain doesn't know the difference between good and bad. So if you get caught up doing negative things all the time, your brain will encode that particular behavior and make it a habit. Now, something you might not know about your brain is this. There are specific neurons and neuron transmitters that trigger a defensive state when we feel the need to protect our thought from the influence of other people, especially when we're being comforted with differences in opinion. The chemicals that are released in the brain are exactly the same as if we're being attacked. So the brain switches to survival mode, you become defensive and when you become defensive, the primitive part of your brain which is also referred as the animal brain kicks in and interferes with rational thinking causing you to become narrow minded. This is a very common thing and you can tell when somebody becomes very stubborn during a discussion, no matter how convincing the idea is, their brain will not be able to process it because on a neural level it reacts as if they're being intimidated or attacked. On the other hand, when we express ourselves and our point of view is appreciated, these same defensive chemicals decreases and dopamine's neuron transmission activates the rewarding neurons making us feel empowered and increasing our self-esteem. That's why you feel better when you take that pill. It's only a placebo. It's not the pill that heals you but the belief of it that heals you because you're so convinced that if I take this medication, I'll be fine. It's mind conditioning. It's effect. So a placebo is an inert substance that has no pharmacologic or medical action. So a placebo effect is the pharmacologic or the beneficial effect that a patient gets from getting that inert substance. And it's generally based upon a patient's beliefs. It's based upon the idea that a patient believes that they're going to get an effect from this substance, even though, again, it has no actual pharmacologic action. What are the brain regions that are thought to be responsible for placebo? Well, it just so happens we have a brain. So if we cut off the brain, we cut open the brain and look at the side, we see that there's this area of the brain called the cingulate cortex. And this anterior portion here is called the anterior cingulate cortex. And this is an area that's heavily involved with both the placebo response and also with pain itself, with the experience of pain. There's another area here a little bit deeper called the thalamus that's also involved with 
placebo response and pain. This is the relay station of the brain. This is an area that takes incoming signals in from the rest of our body and then sends them off into other parts of the brain to be processed and ultimately generate our experience. We know that the placebo response involves some of these frontal regions of the brain. These are the areas of the brain that are involved with executive functioning and thought and memory that all work to set up these expectations that ultimately modulate our experience of pain in some of these deeper brain regions. So all of these end up working together. These and other regions end up working together to generate both our experience of pain and also are acted upon by that placebo effect. Let me show you the example of one subject that we scanned some time ago who gives a nice illustration of the placebo response. This was a young man who had a terrible rollover crush injury of his left upper extremity while he was on safari away from college one summer. He ended up having terrible burning pain in that arm. We brought him into the scanner and we found that when we stroked a particular area of his hand and his arm, he had terrible burning pain in that part of his hand and his arm. And This was represented by this area, by these slides here, which show increase in activity in all the areas of the brain involved with the processing and perception of pain. Now we had an IV in this young man and we told him that we were going to start a very powerful pain relieving medication. And so we did that and what we found is that his pain went down. He had a dramatic reduction in his pain and went from instead of a 7 out of 10 where 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst imaginable, it went from that 7 out of 10 down to a 3 out of 10. And what we found is that Similarly, his brain activity went down as well. Significantly less activity in the brain in all of the areas involved with the processing and perception of pain. But what did we actually give him? Well, it turns out we gave him placebo. We hadn't actually started the active medication yet. When we actually gave him the medication, we found that there was even more reductions in his pain overall and similarly even greater reductions in his brain activity, suggesting that while placebo had a direct action on his brain, the active agent, the pharmacologic agent itself, had even more of an action on it. What does this ultimately mean? Well, what this ultimately means is, first and foremost, pain as we all know really lies within the brain. But we also see that the placebo response itself lies within the brain, that it's a very real phenomenon, that patients are not faking it, that they're not making it up, and that their beliefs can have a huge impact on not only their pain, but we can actually see that impact within the living brain itself. This is very key because it shows how powerful and impactful beliefs have on our body chemistry. Talking about mind conditioning, actually, when we are brought into this world, our environment plays a major role in our lives and how we should perceive reality. Almost our entire moral ethical standard is shaped by our environment. This is one of the reasons why you may notice a certain group of people acting in a very similar way because their actions are often the result of the validation that they get from the environment in which they grow up. This can be super interesting because it gives us the ability to trust and study people people's cultures and identities. In fact, neurological research has confirmed the existence of empathetic mirror neurons. This is basically when we experience an emotion or perform an action. Specific neurons get fired, but when we observe someone else performing the same action or we imagine it, many of the same neurons get fired again as if we were performing the same actions ourselves. A perfect example is when watching a sport game. You know, people tend to kick punch or jump without realizing it. It's this neuron that connects us with other people, allowing us to feel what others feel. This is also what allows us to self-reflect. Keep in mind that these mirror neurons do not know how to differentiate. This is the reason why we're so dependent on social validation and why we always want to fit in. We are in a constant duality between how we see ourselves and how others see us. This can result in confusion in terms of our identity and self-esteem and it can get dangerous because we experience these emotions even before we become aware of them. But when we are self-aware, we can literally change misplaced emotions because we control the thought that causes them. That's why self-observing is very powerful because it changes how our brain works. It activates the self-regulating region of our brain, which is the neurocortex, which gives us maximum control 
control over our feelings, so every time we self-observe, our rationality and emotional resilience becomes much stronger. But when we are not being self-aware, most of our thoughts and actions are impulsive, and the idea that we're randomly reacting and not making conscious choices is very annoying. So the brain tries very hard to resolve this by creating explanations for our behaviors and physically rewriting them into our memory through what is called memory reconsolidation in order to try to make us believe that we were in control of our actions. This is also called backward rationalization and it can leave most of our negative emotions unresolved and ready to be triggered at any time. Thanks for watching. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends and family, leave a comment below, like the video and I'll see you on the next one.